I remember like standing in front of a lot of Da Vinci's original works and that's when it hit me and I was like, oh, I was like, I could do something like this. These are masters, sure, but like they're also human. All right, design is what I'm gonna do. It's like, I can change the world just as much as like these can, these people, like I can do that. So who says I can't do it if I don't put my mind to it? Hey everybody. Welcome to episode 65 of the Andrew Deitch podcast. Hope you guys had an amazing Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, that is. Um, I know my family and I did. Got some, got some great gifts. I also gave some pretty great gifts, if you ask me. Um, gave some cool stuff. But hey, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, hi. How's it going? What's up? Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming to hang out with me today. Uh, basically my podcast is all about having meaningful conversations with the dopest and most fascinating people that I know. And I have a lot of thoughts about that, but now that I'm becoming a little more established, um, I feel like I have a better grasp on what this show is and, uh, where it's going and, I just lost my place on my thing that I was looking at. Um, but there's literally other a million other things that you could be listening to right now. Um, like think about that. It's kind of kind of kind of crazy. But um, before you change your mind <laughs> about what you're listening to, let's get into the show. Um, all right. So my guest today is my friend Taylor Ayers, and Taylor is an artist. He's a designer, a world traveler, and he is currently a student at Savannah College of Art and Design. Not the Atlanta one, not the Atlanta campus, the real one, you posers. <laughs> Anyways, um, I wanted to have Taylor on the show because he is hella woke. He is, <laughs> he is super open-minded and something very interesting he is adopted, which which isn't a weird thing, but he's black and his parents are white. And again, there's nothing weird about that, but it's not every day that you get to talk to someone about that. So that was kind of interesting. And obviously he has very fascinating perspectives on all kinds of different subjects um, just based on that alone. But um, I was really happy that he's so open and honest with me. Um, I feel like he wouldn't have it any other way. He's just a super genuine guy anyways, and he's not afraid to be vulnerable, um, again, which is awesome. And I also wanted to point out that during the recording of this podcast, Taylor was on a juice cleanse, so he was only drinking liquids, so there are a few pee breaks that happened during this episode, but I think it just kind of adds to the reality of the situation. If you gotta go, you gotta go. And especially once you break the seal, there is no going back. So anyways, I'm going to shut up now. So please enjoy my conversation with Taylor A. We're rolling. We can do it, man. We're rolling. Cool. We were already talking anyways. That's all this podcast is, dude. Can you hear me pretty well? I can hear you, actually. It's right, pretty. Sweet. It's, it's, it's actually better than I thought it would be. Sweet, man. And we've got a little bit of like... Like, the, the reason why I didn't want to do it inside, we're, we're at Revelator Coffee in uh what what part of town are we in What's we're in uh, called? the uh, west side provisions west district side provisions district we got some we got some traffic noise but it's kind of i kind of like it because then it's like you feel like you're with us yeah out with they're us not outside. just like sitting in like a yeah a uh yeah artificial studio room exactly fixed setting yeah and we don't have any echoes which is good like i was afraid inside we were sitting next to that wall it was gonna be a little echoey plus there's music there's no sonic bounce yes <laughs> yes no sonic bounce i like that i'm gonna start saying sonic bounce right it's just i i i have a big thing for like words and crap <laughs> and so i always try to like say simple stuff using like the most like extra words so like <laughs> sonic bounce that's dope i like that i like that <laughs> yeah that's awesome so um me and taylor i didn't even introduce you this is taylor Hello. Ayers. yeah Ayers. okay we just went over this but uh we just met yep and we got connected through our mutual friend luke crawford shout out luke crawford what's up luke crawford we just uh and and luke and i just uh just met. I wanted to unplug my headphones because i felt weird i was like you're not wearing headphones i'm not gonna wear headphones you can wear if you want that's cool man <laughs> 
I normally don't wear them the whole time. I was just wearing them and it felt I, I, normal. I thought it was cool. I was like, oh, okay. Like, okay, he's checking official. the levels. Yeah. I might plug them in from time How to time it, just to see. No, but anyway, so we met through uh, Luke and uh, he. I, I, I just reached out. I have a little Facebook group for all the people that have been on the podcast so far. And I think I posted in there like, hey, is there anyone that comes to mind that you think would be good on the podcast? And your name came up and a couple other people here for me too. Sweet. And uh, we, we chatted like a few months ago. And then you went back to school, but yeah, now you're back. We had so con- now we, we, we had made it contrasting happen. schedules. Indeed. And it's all good. It happens, man. So you go to SCAD in Savannah, right? Yeah, I'm, in, I'm at the Savannah campus. Sorry, there in 2015. Is it cool to say SCAD or is it cooler to say Savannah College of Art and Design? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, it, it's kind of funny because like I have a friend or he's like a professor. He was like a professor of mine. And I'll get, I'll, my point will come clear here for a second. Okay, okay. He's like a professor and he went to Georgia Southern undergrad and went to Har- has two graduate degrees from Harvard now. And he was like, yeah, I'm from Savannah. When I was younger, people would ask like, oh, what school do you go to? And he's like, you can't just come out and say you go to Harvard. Like, it makes you sound like a douchebag. It's like, oh, this small liberal arts college in Upper and such and such. It's like, where is it? In Boston, what's it called? Harvard. And immediately you say that, like the moment, and people are just like, oh. And so like people ask me where I go to school, I'm like, I go, I go SCAD. Like, I'm proud of it. And I'm just like, what's that? I'm like, Savannah College of Art and Design. I'm like, oh, you're one of those artists. And I'm like, all right, all right. And then it's just a school, man. Like, it's they, just a they school. They put you in that box immediately. They marginalize me, man. Wow. No, it just happens. But it's me. It's whatever. I was going to say, if you're feeling cold, too, I've got the sun shining. If you scoot I, your I just chair got it, a little. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was no, going to say, I, I know you got it there. I just but got if it. If you wanted to move your chair, you could get some sun. I'm good now. I okay, cool. Good, bro. I was going to say, the weather, it actually feels really nice out here. It feels now nice. That, it's pleasant. Yeah. It's could, not too bad. This is ideal weather for me. Indeed. I uh, agree. I don't like the heat. I like being able to wear a couple layers. Like Layer too gang. hot is a little too much for me. Depth. Yes. Yes, indeed. I'm key on it. Indeed. I'm big on it, man. Indeed. <laughs> but okay, so um so yeah, you go to I'll, SCAD. Yeah. And like I my podcast doesn't really have like a okay, now we talk about this and then we talk about this. It's not Just like an interview. I try to keep it as conversational as possible. For sure. But since I don't really know, I, I don't know your origin story, I mm-hmm. guess I could say, uh, kind of t- like, if you can, just kind of like bring us back, like, how did, how did Taylor of today become Taylor of today? Like, what things along the road, like, made you become yeah. the person you are? Because, like, obviously, I can look at you now and I'm like, oh, this is Taylor, he's this cool guy, he's got some cool piercings, he goes yeah. to Savannah College <laughs> of Art and Design. Yeah. And, uh, but there's, there's not really any context to that. Exactly, like, there's no context. And then he's friends with Luke, and he seems like a cool guy. I've been friends with him on Facebook for a few months. But, like, that's about it. So, like, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm from, like, the West Georgia area. For anyone who's, like, familiar with that, it's, like, very i'm close to the alabama georgia state line like it's like where i live is like 36 miles on i-20 west so i'm from like the deep south or what i call deep south but anyway but it's yeah. out it's kind of out in the sticks like people I'm, are I'm out here like i'm really out there like yeah. atlanta's not southern compared to what i'm from no like i'm really really out there yeah um, uh but yeah like um i grew up playing i guess like I grew up playing tennis, always involved in the arts. My parents really? got me involved. Yeah, I, I grew up playing tennis too. You did? Yeah, nice. yeah, all through high school and stuff, and then I kind of fell off. No, that happens, man. Yeah, I grew. Up, I kind of left school in like eighth grade to try to pursue a professional career, and like was homeschooled and wow. like switched around to a bunch of high schools and ended up playing a year, and then in college at Oglethorpe and Brookhaven or Oglethorpe University, and yeah, yeah, I got I got burned out. I think just a lot of stuff like. I don't really, looking back, you know, you can only really connect the dots to going backwards. CC Steve Jobs on that quote. But, um, <laughs> like, he, I look back, I was I, I was good at it, but I wasn't passionate about it, so I didn't have the desire to push myself. And, I feel you. Um, Did your parents, like, push you to do it? Or? No, like, they were straight. They were always supported. You know, they always... That's su- cool. They, they supported me and everything. But, I mean, I think my mom knew deep down I wasn't passionate about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, when things all changed... Um, I have to have, since I've been drinking this juice, I have to like pee quite often. So like, if, if we I have think, to pee, we can pause it or I, or we can, or I can just roll. Okay. All right. All right. I'll just let you so know. So if you have the urge, don't, don't be ashamed to, okay, to, okay. to go pee. Um, it yeah. happens. So I went to Oglethorpe University and Oglethorpe is really big on writing. Like I remember the first, I mean, the first thing you do when you get there is like, you're doing, you know, 
you're writing a lot. Iliad, the Odyssey, you're reading a lot of books, a lot of theory books, a lot of philosophy books, you know, very kind of cerebral literature, if you say. And, uh, like, I took this philosophy class. I was playing tennis there, and I wasn't really enjoying it, and I realized it was kind of a business, didn't really have any sport aspect anymore. And I took this existentialist class, like, existentialism is like a sect or like a part of philosophy, like I took it in my spring semester. And that kind of like flipped the light bulb in my head, like the comp, like that was kind of like the, the, the woke moment. That was like, oh, like, okay, like this all makes sense. I was like, interesting. Right. Like that's when everything clicked. And I'd also done that, like, I'd read like a, like some, a Steve Jobs book and learned about like his philosophy of art or his philosophy of design and technology. And I also ran, I read this really great book with like how to win friends and influence people. To Who's that by again? Car- Dale Carnegie. Dale yeah, Carnegie, yeah. I mean, like, name's kind of like cheesy, but there's some there's some dime stuff in there. For sure. Some great stuff in there For that sure. like kind of ties in the way I do a lot of do lot, the way I do stuff now. And then um, I studied abroad in Italy. I got to, I got to use the bathroom. Um, Dude, it's all good. It's all good. So bad Dude, we'll keep. We'll, we'll pause it. We'll pause Dude, it. I'm sorry. I think that's how I had it. All right, go for it. We're good? We're good. Okay. I can hear you. I yeah. can hear you. So, <laughs> yeah, I studied abroad in Italy with this group uh, called like Lead, Lead Abroad. And I, I remember just kind of just like walking around. What parts of Italy? Uh, we were, oh, yeah. So, we were in the sister school of St. John's University, which is based out of New York, but they have like a sister school in, in Rome. And then, like, every weekend they're doing like trips. So, like, first weekend I was in Florence, and the last weekend I was in Milan and whatnot. And it was really great. That's dope. I was going to um, guess Florence because Florence, like so many study abroad kids go to Florence. Yeah, it's like the stereotypical place. It's so stereotypical. It's like the super stereotypical place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like that was a really great experience. And I think the moment clicked for me when I was like kind of walking down the streets and like kind of running my hands on like the sides of the buildings. And I, I just like, I don't know, I, just, I felt the, I still kind of get chills thinking about it, but I, I just, I felt the the care to detail. Mm. I felt the concern, you know, like th- there was something like this, just the way of life in Europe, or especially when I was in Italy was, well, it could be arguably an art itself, you know, and most just, definitely it, it, there's just a, there like, there's just a, a deep concern and care for everything. Like I remember walking past a plumbing restaurant, I mean, a plumbing store, and even the like the, the the parts were designed beautifully. Even like there was aesthetics that was going involved in, in how like the bolts were assembled, like or, or yeah. per, like presented on the wall. And I had this really great professor who like really put us on to a lot of stuff. And and then you know I remember like standing in front of a lot of Da Vinci's original works and and like standing you know where he stood when he made this. And that's yeah. when it clicked for me. And I was like, that's when it hit me. And I was like, oh. I was like, I could do something like this. Yeah. I was like, these are masters, sure, but like they're also human. Totally. It's like, you know, and that's when it clicked, and I was like, all right, design is what I'm gonna do. It's like I can change the world just as much as like these can these people. Like they, like they're like no, and it sounds kind of bold to say, but it's like, yeah. You know, there's this like there's this interview about like Jobs, and he's just like. The moment you realize you can poke life and something can come out of it, like the moment you realize that everything you know up as like as life was made by someone no smarter than you and I, the moment you realize you'll never see the world again the same. You'll yep. never see this, the world the same again. That's when it clicked to me. I was just like, Jobs did. Jobs made Apple in a in you know in a garage. Like I can do that. Exactly. Who says I can't do it if I put my mind to it? Exactly. It's, you know, it's like it's like Da Vinci did this. Einstein did that. They're no smarter than you and I. Exactly. They just believed in themselves. Exactly. They just knew they had the power to change the world. I was like, mm-hmm. that's that's been kind of like my mindset for like three years. That's fucking. And awesome. so like it just it just twi- like a light bulb twit, and that's when the woke part came up, and I was like, oh, I was like, there's depth, and like I have to analyze every single thing in this world, and that's when like things kind of changed. But I didn't, and that's when I knew my passion was. I was like, I want to design, I want to make stuff. Yeah. So, and then like, had you ever like, like when you were younger, like, did you, did you have any interest in that kind of stuff before? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I was always in like theater. 
So I was always, in a way, expressing myself. Like I was always in theater and like drawing classes and whatnot. But I went to private school when I was younger, and like I went to Woodward Academy from like fifth to eighth grade. And like those kind of contexts don't really push artistic freedom. Mm. They kind of push people down. Like the it's a very like private school is great, and I met some great people there. I yeah. mean, heck, I'd probably even have my kids there. Like like not, but in private school, not specifically Woodward. But private school is great, but there's not really like the oh you're different. Let's support that. It's like Hey, well, here's what's going to get you X, Y, and Z. And I'm yep. like, ah, I don't really mesh that way. Yeah. And if you don't buy into it, you, you kind of, your experience there ends up kind of being miserable, yeah. which kind of sucks. Yeah, know? yeah, I, I totally agree. It's like, instead of trying to mold the program or system around the student, the student is expected to mold and fit into the system. And, like, that's just not me. Like, you know. Yeah. Like, I think when you're younger, I say that like like I'm 50, but <laughs> you know, I, th- I think when you're like 20 or like 19, 18, or 17, 18, 19, 20, you know, like it's kind of, there's like the the cool where it's like cool to be like counterculture. It's like cool yeah. to be like, oh, well, like I hate capitalism and like oh, well, like I'm an anarchist and like oh, I listen to Slayer and like and like <laughs> and I'm not trying to talk crap or anything, but it's like really cool to be alternative. Yeah. And I think it's kind of a bit of an act. But and then... Most I got, definitely. And it 100% is. It's like teen rebellion. Then I got a little older. Yeah. I started to embrace who I was. And I was like, I'm not trying to be a rebel. It's like, I just want to embrace who I am. And I realized that certain the way I do things doesn't always align up with the way the masses do things. And it's not me trying to be like, I'm trying to be counterculture. It's like, I'm just being Taylor. Yeah. Like, I'm just genuinely being myself. Exactly. Like, I'm not going in there. Like, I'm not wearing a biker jacket trying to look like a... Like, a hard ass like I'm just I'm just genuinely into th- certain things and I started to analyze what I was into and I was like oh I'm into things that are a little bit rougher on the edges and mm-hmm. like that's okay yeah you know I was like I feel that just the my the ways I go about things can't usually be like confined <laughs> to like one area yeah. you know yeah. so that's dope though because I think a lot of people they find comfort in putting themselves into this thing that already exists like for example, you see the stereotypical, like if we're talking clothes, for example, you said stuff that's rough around the edges, people can't see right now, but your your jeans are like sewn at the knees, you've got like rough cuts yeah, on yeah, them, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So like, for example, uh, if we're talking clothes, people don't want to, people aren't always gonna try to go out and create their own style, they're gonna try to fit into whatever. So if they're like- They're gonna be trendy. A white frat dude, they're gonna be wearing some like vineyard vines and some like short like columbia yeah, shorts facts, and, and like Absolutely. some high white nike socks and some and some nike like free runs or something because i mean and you know i used to kind of i it's funny like if anyone is actually were to dig on my facebook and my instagram i used to dress incredibly preppy and then i i always joke then i got woke you know <laughs> and then i went away from like the masses right but you know i i've kind of come this full circle it's like it's like if, if someone can honestly tell me, like, hey, I just enjoy wearing this stuff. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy doing that. Like, if someone can be that self-aware, like, I can respect that. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm with that. Yeah. But what I, it's hard, what I, like, don't really, you know, I don't really have a tolerance for is where it's like, oh, man, you just, like, dress weird. Or, like, you'd, like, you'd, you'd, like you don't do this such and such. But it's like, bro, do you even know why you dress the way you do? And it's like, what do you mean? Another question. Just like, then you can't critique someone else, man. Yeah, exactly. If you haven't taken the time to discover yourself to find out who you are, to find out what goes on the inside of yourself, don't even think about critiquing someone else. Yeah. Because how can you know other people if you don't know yourself? Exactly. Well, I think it's also like people can label it because they feel like they're trying to be quote unquote normal and everyone has this idea of what normal Normal is. is. For sure. Like, like you said, when you go to Italy, you have an idea of what's normal, but then all of a sudden, like the way they do things is like strange, Facts. but to them, that's normal. I mean, they talked about this. So I'd also travel a lot when I was younger, so I kind of had a good idea of, you know. That's so important, good, I think. Yeah, it was one of the best things ever. That's uh, awesome. I'd traveled a lot uh, when I was younger, so I kind of had an idea of how to act or how yeah. to be in a different country because, uh, you have to be I mean, the harsh, you know, the, the harsh reality and, and by no means, uh, I need to preface this before I say this, because if I don't, it'll come out the wrong way. Um, by no means, nothing about me is anti-America, like, by any means. I have damn pleasure to live where I live. But um, a lot of people think America is the epicenter of the universe. And... Uh, Even a lot of foreigners think that, my, too, though. And, 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 which I understand. Yeah, yeah. But in, in, I'm, it's like other people go through other things in different parts of the country. 
who mm-hmm. are just as valid as you are. Yep. You know, like poverty isn't only an issue in, in America. Yeah. You know, and when you put that actually into perspective, we're actually probably a lot better off. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not yeah. speaking no, about 100%. everyone, but you know, and that's what I realized when I was in Italy, you know, they talked to us about ugly Americanism and people had never traveled. First of all, when you go, like when I was in Italy, like no one like drinks, like not, I mean, there's some, yes, but like when you go out, like we're going out to like a dinner, like the only, the loudest people in the entire restaurant was my table. Yeah. I was like, this is embarrassing. Yep. This is all people know. They're just getting drunk and drinking lots of wine. No one does it. There's an appreciation even for the way they consume alcohol. It's like, I want to appreciate it. No one's getting drunk. Yep. Yep. You know, I'm just like, come on, man. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was just, it, I find it interesting. And that was always just like, wow, this appreciation, this European kind of Eastern approach to life. But I really appreciate it, it. It's interesting because sometimes like, uh, I, I didn't mention this before, but I mentioned it on the podcast a million times. I was an au pair. So I was like a nanny basically for a family uh, for two summers. I did one time, one summer in Italy, one summer in Spain. So I spent like two summers in respective places. And like one thing that my uh, Spanish host dad told me one time, he was like, you know, people always like criticize Americans because they're loud, they're lazy, they're fat, like all the stereotypical American things. But he's like, you know, there's certain things about Americans that like sometimes I wish that I had. Like, for example, if it seems like most of you are not ashamed to do like public speaking. He's like, I'm he's like, I would be terrified to talk in front of like 10 people or whatever. And like, it was really interesting to hear that other yeah. side. Cause like, even though a lot of it is like this ugly Americanism but stuff. But there's also some there's great like, stuff. There's like a flip side where people are like, shit, I wish I was that like extreme. You know, like Americans are like extreme with everything. We're extra like, as hell, we're, man. we're so extra. We're super extra. We're like, extra bro, like, fuck. like <laughs> total frat move is like the, is the epitome of what's extra. Uh-huh. Like yep. we literally, it's like the epitome of like, how extra you can get at, at college, like go look at like Barstool Sports. Or, like, I was about to year, say that. Which I, don't get me wrong, or like it's morons funny. doing things. Like I was up till 3 a.m. looking at that the other night. Yeah. But like, yeah, like it's super, like that stuff doesn't happen in, uh, in universities overseas. No. Like the stuff you can get arrested for, but it, it's, I mean, I'm not gonna get on a topic of like. Yeah, yeah, we, that's a whole nother thing. But, a whole nother but yeah, yeah that, it, it is fascinating because like, it's all kind of based around like, that it's come up a ton on my podcast and that was kind of one of the main like themes I kind of wanted like a sub theme is like this idea of trying to get people to step out of their comfort zone of what they view as like normal or what they view as like bro I gotta pee again but like bro, no worries we're gonna go- get on that topic because okay. I think about this so much <laughs> I, like, I like the pee breaks actually dude I, this juice is running through me dude no worries you picked the best worst thing <laughs> I kind of like the, the idea of having these commercial breaks. But, um, but yeah, so we were talking about like the idea that people have this idea of like what's normal and then once you step out and put yourself in someone else's shoes, you realize like, oh shit, like this is normal for them or whatever. You're like, yeah, like I was talking to my mom about this. Like, so I'm adopted. Both my parents are like very white, and I joke about it, like all the time. So like, I'm, I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up because I think I saw a Facebook post yeah, you made me. a while ago. That's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So I've so grown both your up, parents are white. Yeah, I've grown up too black for the white kids, too white for the black kids. I've grown up in politically split home. Um, hmm. I've grown up, you know, in a very. I've grown up in as a Christian. At the time, we were in the we were in the state right now where, you know, organized religion is at its lowest form of uh, of uh, activity amongst Americans. Yeah, you know, and um, it, and going to an art school that's an interesting concept. You know yeah. what I mean? So you, you see a lot. So, and I'm open minded as hell. Like I don't like I like I can I acknowledge everything. You know, and um, but you know it's interesting because my I kind of told myself when I was younger, I was like I don't want to know everything. It's like another light bulb, but I want to do my best to understand as much as I can, even if I don't agree or even if I don't, you know, support or whatever. Like, I'm going to do my very best to understand and, and I guess empathize. Maybe that's the word. Yeah, that's empathize a great word. Empathize with it. No matter, no matter how uncomfortable, maybe how foreign it is, I'm going to do my absolute best to. And it is so funny, man, you know, because I have like a lot of friends who share stuff on Facebook or lots of people who make comments or people who do this. Like, 
oh, like, white privilege isn't real, or or it's just like you know, like you know, like, that's just a horrible way to live your life. And I I think it's just it's like one's own opinions are fueled solely by one's own perspective of life. Yeah. Or one's own privilege. And I think also the more you double down on like what you believe, like the more you kind of see in the world of that belief, like what you kind of like Absolutely. want to see, you end up seeing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that goes for both sides of, of any coin. Like it goes for, like you know, some people, it's like the glass half full, glass half empty. They're both right, but the guy who tends to look at life positively can see, oh shit, I got half a glass. And the other person's looking at it and saying, oh shit, someone drank half my glass. You know what I mean? I, got, I have incredibly liberal friends. You know, Scott's like a very liberal yeah. content. And there's some conservative people there. I would say colleges in general tend to be a lot. For most sure. of the time. For most sure. Most of the time. I have some very liberal friends, very conservative friends. And I've seen them share stuff on both sides. And I'm just like, okay, first of all, you're only, if you're only, if, like, you can't expect to be well rounded in your perspective if the only people you hang around are like-minded people mm -hmm. and I don't mean who are on the same wave as you but who are in but if you only hang around people who are into the same stuff as you are who who are support the same stuff as you who do such the same stuff as you like you get kind of like you get like a lot of your opinions I don't know they, they like they kind of lose they kind of lose foundation because you only come at a world from one angle. Mm -hmm. You don't see, oh, why doesn't this person feel this way about this? Why does this person feel that way about this? And when you realize, like, the, uh, the things are valid. And, you know, like, you got to respect, like, get a conservative's view on, on social issues. Get a liberal's view on social issues. Get a conservative's view on religion. And get a liberal's view on religion. And res but they're both valid. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, you got ignorant people on both sides. But I think it's important, like, seek out the uncomfort. Have the conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, like have a conversation with like ask a, ask a black person what it's like yeah. to be black in America. Ask someone who's uh, any of the LGBTQ. Like, and don't be don't immediately be like, oh, I, you live a different life than me. Regardless if you support I'm not or gay, not. but like I just wanted to ask you. No, but it's just like have the conversation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because what you'll find is, and what I found is like I got people who I have people who are complete homies and families to me, but who don't necessarily support what I do. Mm. And I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Why? Because they had a conversation with me. They, they don't agree with some of the stuff I do. I'm mm -hmm. not talking about like dating a white girl or some shit like that. But I'm saying like they yeah. may not agree with some of the stuff I do. It may <laughs> not, they may not like it or some of the message I convey, but they had the conversation with me. I can always respect that. Mm -hmm. always be my, those will always be family to me. Who, anyone who, who, has the, who can have an educated conversation and can back up a point, I, I, and you know, I, can, I can respect that. Yeah. I can respect having a conversation maybe over like just like not supporting me i don't know i i, I yeah. guess i can i can live with that like that's yeah. cool with me yeah i can't stand when people have a convert when they can't have a conversation they always want it to be like a debate where there's always like a winner and loser like there there can be this mutual agreement like okay you think this way i think this way and i understand why you think that way and you understand why i think this way and we can kind of agree to disagree sort of thing but we're both we're both homies at the end of the day. That's the thing, man. Like I don't ever have a tolerance. For, I was talking to my friend Dan. He was like, "Well, there's no middle ground for ignorance." I was like, "I completely agree with that." Mm. On the flip side, no middle ground for ignorance. I was I like, I, yeah. I was like, I agree with that entirely. Flip side of that is like you got to realize that not everyone like people are just like, "Oh, the world should be all liberal." It's like that won't ever happen. Like the people people are just like, "Oh, the world should be all conservative." That won't ever like. We don't live in it. There's 7.6 billion people in a year in, 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 in the country, like in the world. Like that's, that's such a, like a very scary and false way to live, you know? And it's like, who am I to sit here and tell someone how to live? But you got to be real with yourself, you mm -hmm. know? Like not everyone's going to, going to mesh with what you do. And like, I, I heard this recently, it really resonated with me. And they said, happiness does not exist in a vacuum. Meaning like, if everyone is liberal, you're still going to find Re still, ways to disagree with them. Man, I swear, people don't get that, dude. Yeah, like, it, like just because, like, you're gonna be divided in some way. Like, okay, cool, you be you believe the same things politically, stand on the same issues politically, but like, you know, there's gonna be other things that divide. There's gonna be other things, that and like that's conflict. okay. Yeah, exactly. Like, we, <laughs> it's like we we get into, we've gotten to this age where like where like if we ha if we don't agree with everything at all times, ever such, then you're wrong. Mm -hmm. No celebrate the differences mm. so, like 
just because you may not support someone doesn't mean you can't help that person. Mm. Doesn't mean you can't be a, a, a confidant for that person. Doesn't mean you can't love that person. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like we have to look past our egos, like, and our, take ourselves out of the situation and be like, I don't care if you don't support any of the stuff I do. I'm going to be here for you. Yeah. Because we we both get pain in a day. Mm -hmm. That's very true, man. And I think a lot of people are like very like married to their ideas where like you said the Ooh. ego like they're not willing to budge on an that's idea the that they toxic thought thing man and like that's the thing man is like ideas are simply that they're just they're fleeting like an idea can pop into your brain that you might not have even controlled to be there but if you're willing to accept that it might not be the correct idea then then i'm open to talking you gotta you know open i talked i talked about this is my friend my girlfriend friend lol taylor's gonna have a joke about taylor that's my girlfriend uh, <laughs> Taylor Jean, Tedera, Taylor Edera Singa. She's uh, lives in Wisconsin in the Midwest, uh, met her SCAD. Talked to her about this, you know, I was like, I, I think the true sign of a, of a true, of, of an authentic open mind is acknowledging the existence of something first, like first and then second would be, second is whether or not you agree or disagree. Not mm. immediately shooting down something like that. I mean, Albert Einstein said that actually. He's like, that's a true sign of intelligence. And, you know, like, have the, sp the mental space, intellectual capacity to acknowledge that something may be different than what, and you may radically disagree, but acknowledge what it is. You don't have to accept it or deny it, but acknowledge that it exists. Mm. If, you can have, if you can leave space in your mind at all times, there's not a topic you can't discuss. Yeah. But also a lot of people don't think that way though. No. And I, and, you know, like it's hard to have conversations. Yeah. With and, 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 and that's what I appreciate, uh, is someone who's willing to have a conversation. Some people are, they don't, they don't even want to talk. Absolutely. And, and I think sometimes it's because they're not completely solid on their own thing. Like sometimes people that are like extremely religious, like they've never really actually considered why they are this way. Like they might've just, their parents Bro. are, their parents are Bro. Christians and like they're, they're immediately Bro. like they've memorized a couple of little things and they're just like. Well, blah, 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 and, and, and they don't actually want to talk about why they, their personal experience, they're just, they're just shouting off, well, like, just they, they live, that, they've lived, what, 23 years of habit. Mm -hmm. They've lived 23 years of habit of going to their comfortable Presbyterian church, and, and I'm not dissing anything about religion. I'm, I'm a Christian. I was born in a Christian family, but I, I fully, I have, one of my best friends is atheist. Yeah. I don't care. I love him. He's my brother. Mm-hmm. It's like I got friends who, 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 who people at SCAD who make jokes about religion. I don't, okay, I'm still your boy. Like that's my, those are my people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so, so you don't, so you think we live in this like grid, like grid, like, you know, big bang, like complex, like time is a flat circle. Like the earth is flat. Okay, <laughs> I'll have a conversation about it. Come over to my house. Let's sit down. But you also got to remember this, so like, if I respect your opinions and then, and I don't agree, I'm going to respect what you have to say. I may have my own opinion to say about it, but I'm going to respect you because that's what you think. But you better come correct though, because don't, if I invite you to talk, like don't shoot me down because I believe what I believe, because I'm, I'm willing to have the conversation with you. Because that's yeah. what it's about. That's how you, that's, that's how we come together, man. Yeah, exactly. And we converse. Exactly. We don't sit there and tell someone they're wrong, but you want to get on a religion, man, like, I think that, you know, uh, strong faith is a highly challenged one. I'm big into philosophy, and you know, there's some people who question, who are atheists, you know, and like, yeah, I, I like, what if, what if I, what if all of my teachings in the Bible are completely wrong? Yeah, I think it's silly to even necessarily call yourself an atheist because you are, you're actually saying there, you're like definitively saying I believe there is no God, where, whereas like. You should be kind of just like open, like shit. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, right? Like you, you should, you should be open to the fact, like, dude, I don't know. I have a strong feeling that and there be probably okay isn't. to say I don't know. Yeah. We had this issue with having like an answer. It's like, yeah, shit. If you don't know, say you don't know. Exactly. Like that's why. That's like it, that. That's where it's funny because atheism almost becomes its own religion because you belief are believing that there is no possible way. Like, how how do you know? How do you know there's no possible way? Like, like and, fam, yeah, exactly. you ain't that smart. <laughs> exactly. Like, like you, it's not something you can measure in a, in, in our world. So how can you even say that it is or isn't a thing? If it's something that's out of being able to measure or control or hold in a 
put it, pour it out, put, hold it in your hand. Like, there's no equation. Yeah, there's no equation. And all you can, and that's why they call it faith in religion, is because you have a belief. And, you know, some people say they have proof because, uh, well, you know, uh, God spoke to me in a voice or whatever. You know, whatever it might be. But, like, you got to respect that as well. But you also, like, I, I, like you were saying, like, there's no tolerance for people that, that, uh, they can't be open to at least hearing you out of, of why you believe what you believe or whatever. Say they're open minded but don't want to have a conversation. I'm like, nah, fam, that's not open minded. That's closed minded. You're open minded to stuff you want to hear. Mm hmm. Like, open, I'm open minded, dude. I'm an atheist. I'm not, <laughs> like, whatever. Come to church with me then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come, hey. pull up on Sunday. Yeah. Come to church with me. Yeah. Is, if, if someone's like, oh, like you say you believe in God, you never be here, like, have a satanic ritual, I'll pull up. Dead ass, I will be there. I mean, I get down with that stuff. I wear black all the time. Like, no, I'm serious. Like, that's how, that's how that. abstract of thought Dead I think. Ass, I'm pulling like, up. I will pull up. Like, bro, I will bring tacos. Like, I'm in that thing. <laughs> like, you need a goat? Pull up. I got a farm. I'll pull up. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm that open to have any conversation. That's awesome. That's awesome. But it's also like, if you're going to believe in something, you got to be willing to question it. And you got, and qu no, questioning isn't enough. You have to seek out mm. day in, day out. Mm. I don't know everything about the Bible. I, hell, I yeah. could be, hell, I could be wrong. I'm, I may not ever know. But I'm going to continue to study. Exactly. Exactly. And if you're going to defend something, you better be able to. You, if you're going to talk about something, you're going to believe in something. It doesn't have to be religion. We not even talk about religion. We can believe in anything. Seek it out. Mm -hmm. Seek. Continue to seek. And that's, that's, I mean, awesome. that's where I am, man. That's awesome. Dude, I, I feel like we're on the same page with a lot of this stuff. But I, I want to go back for a second because yeah, you were talking about it. when you were in Italy and then you were feeling the design standing where yeah. the artist stood and all this yeah. shit. And so you got inspired. Yeah. And you changed from Oglethorpe, you went to SCAD, right? No, okay, uh, so I went what to happened? What happened there? Oglethorpe to West Georgia. Okay. And I did back, core. Kind of back yeah, near just to knock out core and whatnot. I feel a, you. I mean, I'm not, a, I commented this on Luke's profile because there's like an hour cool post about SCAD. Like, I'm sorry. I saw that actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm not about to go to art school to do English. Exactly. Go to, st dude, don't do that. Exactly. That's, that's I, I'm waste. glad that you, that, that you say that because I, I would agree. Like, don't do that. Go to state school, bro. No dissing, but like, don't go to go to art school for art. Don't go to art school for like your core. Um, so, but but were you going so, there in hopes that you would uh, would eventually go to SCAD? Was that yeah, the plan? Yeah, I knew it was. Yeah, I knew when I when I got down to West Georgia, I wasn't going to stay here. It just wasn't for me. It wasn't a bad school by any means. It just wasn't for me. But when you left Oglethorpe, you had the intentions of, of going well, elsewhere to do like design elsewhere, or something. Yeah, but I just didn't know. I was looking at NYU. And I was looking at uh. You know, SCAD, my mom said this funny thing. She's like, Taylor, we're not sending you to a, a $60,000 school to find yourself. Yeah. And I was like, I respect that. She's like, tell me what you want to do. Find a program. We'll make it work. I was like, done. Industrial design was what I initially went to school for because I wanted to go work in tech. Um, then I got industrial design. I was like, eh, it's ain't for me. That's cool. That's really cool. And so now, like, you're, 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 you're I mean, you're an artist. You create yeah. art and stuff. But, like, on that journey, so you got to SCAD and you were, like, what, what evolution happened, I guess? Like, what, what has transpired? Uh, wow. Or, like, what inspired you to, like, create the art that you're creating now or whatever it might be? I mean... Because so I'm always fascinated by that, you know? Because some people, they, they're, you know, they, they'll, they're a painter and they create, like, realist paintings. And, like, that's... You, get, you can understand that. Like, okay, cool. You're painting something to try to make it look yeah, like that, real life. There's, an, there's a bit of an, like, a applicable, like layman's equation for that you exactly know what I mean? exactly like a normal person abstract, can look at that and be like that's different. holy shit like yeah. this per that looks like a real thing and you painted it with a brush like that's crazy and then you and then you'll have that same person go to like a modern art museum or something and see something and be like, like i could do that i can make that which is kind of actually the point kind of mm. dumbs down the, mm. the arrogance of the, the i the feel fine that art. i feel that and another thing that i had to like I, I realized, I think I talked about this on a podcast before, but... Uh, you have a you great know, beard. Thanks, man. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, my, uh, I, I went and saw the Cause exhibit at the uh, High. Dude, yeah. Huge, diehard Cause fan. Yeah, me too. Brian Donnelly, love Cause. Yeah, he's, he's the shit. He's cool, isn't he? Yeah, he's the shit. He started in graffiti. Yeah. And like... In New York. And, and... I, I saw like the the big statues that he has like these giant companions yes, yeah that's what yes. they're called yeah they're and, fantastic and, and these these massive ones and I was sitting there thinking I was like because I hadn't really fully grasped this idea that like an an artist well actually no I I was in an art class and I kind of thought about this before in high school but like the idea that 
he didn't go and like carve this shit out of wood. He didn't like actually assemble it, but he came up with a design. He yeah. came up with this thing and gave it to somebody Absolutely. else to assemble, create, deliver, all that stuff. So even though his hand might have not even exactly touched the materials, it's still like this his, his brainchild. Art. Yeah, it's like his brainchild is his art. And that kind of like, that, that like, once I, that clicked for me, I kind of realized that like, oh shit, like anything that is created, like this chair, like was not touched by the guy that actually thought of the chair and created the design for the chair, but it's still his like art, like his functional art or whatever it might be. And like once I started realizing that, I was like, oh shit, like kind of anything can be art, like functional yeah. stuff can be art too. Like yesterday I had a, I did a podcast with this guy, Kevin Fuller, and he makes um, dope furniture. Like that's his art. Like he makes like really dope furniture. Like one of the pieces he's working on, he bought, um, you know, like the Burberry pattern, like yeah. the Burberry like plaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He bought like 20 yards of it and he's gonna make some like sofas with like nice. Burberry wool. And I was like, that's so dope. Like just stuff like that. And uh, and, and, and yeah, like that, dude, I don't I have know. To pee again. It's all good, dude. Let's, let's go for it. Dude, Let's who pee. am I? This is the most peeing that I've had on a podcast, but I kind of like it. It's awesome. kind of funny. It's all good. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> no worries, dude. I can respect the peeing because I I've drank a, a lot of um, I drink a lot of water and and I I respect it. Okay, cool. We're back. I already pressed record. Oh sweet. So we're we're live again. Eat, dude. That looks. It's good. So you're going on a glute juice cleanse right now. Yeah, That's, I'm literally only drinking juice for two so days. Just juice. So we got some apple, celery, cucumber, green kale, spinach, Swiss chard, romaine, ginger, and lemon. So I'm doing greens today, and then I'm doing like cayenne and lemon Ooh. tomorrow only. Interesting. I've never done a juice cleanse. I kind of want to try. I mean, it's real. That's for sure. It's yeah. very intense. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's a mind over matter. Yeah. Yeah. What were we talking about? We were, I was going on a rant about like some cause or something. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, like, yeah. It was like, yeah, cause, man. But, um, but, but yeah, so like, for example, like you said cause like started in graffiti and now he like makes all kinds of stuff. Like how did you decide like what type of art you were going to make or like what your medium was uh, and all that yeah, kind of stuff? Yeah, so I'd kind of, I mean, I'd kind of always been a, like, uh, I took like a mural painting class like at West Georgia and like, it's funny because it's, I had like no really classical training in art and like like one of the biggest faux pas in, in painting is like never use paint directly from the tube and I was like why the hell not if you like it and I was like why not just use it it's like a huge arrogant fine art thing yeah um but like my first professor was just like you don't really know how to paint do you I was like I'm literally learning as I go and like some art teachers aren't really open-minded to that they kind of want people to already have like a foundation of stuff so like I struggled in that class but like whatever and I was I kind of and sparked the whole like i'm gonna learn this like i'm, I'm gonna figure this out and then i was like all right then i got the scad and kind of like you know interest left per se of that at the current moment and then felt, honestly dude like i fell in love for the first time and then like set spring or like january of 2016 started writing a lot and then started painting like bl black background and then doing like white letters on top and that's i mean like that's where that's where it all started I fell in love with, uh, um, this is my ex-girlfriend now, but was, uh, I fell in love with a girl named, named, named uh, Peyton Einoff, who uh, um, is, you know, played a, is still to this day plays a huge role in, in my own life. And um, yeah, I just started writing about that and then started painting it. And then, you know, one thing turns to another, posting, I'm write, posting all my writings online and, and then, you know, like start painting and whatnot. And then started kind of getting into the, abstract stuff a little bit little bit later on because I was big into Mark Rothko, big into Basquiat, big in like the Jackson Pollock and wanted to kind of get into like the more intellectual side of art. So started doing some abstract work and but also like I, I, I was talking to my mom at the end of my day like end of the day I'm a drawer before I'm a painter yeah like that's just how I've always been like I'm always drawing on stuff and so I also love the, like outlaw culture, like Hell's Angels, and so I draw a lot of skulls, and like I love like American traditional tattoos, and like so I love all that kind of like 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 you know I love like old punk like flyers and like you know the cramps and like 
Nah, just stuff like like eh, like like I love like the the Metallica font, Slayer font, yeah. Iron Maiden, Pantera. Like I think all that stuff is cool. So I, I and I I listen to that kind of stuff. So yeah. like, it kind of influenced my art. It's kind of this like street approach, like Thrasher skate 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 brand. Yeah, I was gonna I, say you're wearing a Thrasher shirt. Yeah, like, I I grew up skating. That's cool. So like I grew up in that culture, like the super, just like the super kind of abrasive like. No, skating wasn't cool. Like a while, like no, skating wasn't really cool for like. I mean, I mean, it was cool, but it wasn't cool like it is now. Yeah, it was. You didn't have people like unless you, the only way, reason you wore a thrasher unless you skated. Exactly, and now it's like every white girl's got a thrasher shirt and Vans. And wears like Vans, yep. which is cool, like at that shoe, but like yeah, yeah I know where that shit came. It's from. like skater aesthetic. Yeah, it's, it's like, like okay, but. Yeah, and, I don't have any issue with someone wearing a damn t-shirt. No, I mean, yeah, and and that's the funny thing is I grew up being too much of a pussy to actually <laughs> like try to like try to actually like skate hard, but I was so into like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and stuff course, like the games, and so like I like desperately wanted to be like a part of that culture, but like I would show up to the skate. I was the kid that would like be embarrassed to go to the skate park or like too scared to like try something and also i was like homeschool and i was really young so like the kids in my neighborhood i didn't really i wasn't really friends with and we were kind of like dorks like just riding around on like walmart 15 dollars skateboards like not being able to do anything sure, like man. like one of my neighbors his his older brother's really good at skating but he was much older and so he had already moved out of the house but anytime he came around he was always trying to like teach us stuff but i was always too like scared to try it because i was afraid i was gonna get hurt <laughs> it's fear for sure <laughs> And like, I was always very envious of the kids that were like not afraid to like try a trick where you might fall or something. Cause I was always just like, why would I try that? I might scrape my knee or like, why would I try that? I might get a board to the tooth or something. You know Dude, what I mean? It's like, I never thought about that. Yeah. Cause like, I grew up skiing. Ah. So like I would go straight down the mountain. Never use poles. Damn, that's awesome. I mean like I kind of hate down. the poles too. I tend to like not really use them much if I'm skiing. I know, just, yeah. But it, yeah, it's interesting. Kind of played into the whole like fearlessness kind of like that's kind of dope. Have now, dude. I was gonna we we kind of touched on this a, like a little bit ago, but uh, we're kind of bouncing around. But I don't care. But like, so you were adopted when you were younger. Yeah, man. And like, what? I mean, I just don't have any context for that. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I, I, I would I'm adopted not birth. Adopted and, and I know for a while I didn't have. Sorry, let me cut you off. But no, adopt, no. Adopted birth for a while. I didn't really have a relationship with my birth parents or birth siblings. I do now. Like, you know, and kind of had to come of age because I didn't really understand where they came from. I don't really think they understood where I came Well, I mean, there was, but, like, it's just a weird thing. You know, adoption is just quirky. It's just quirky shit, man. Like, yeah. you know. Um, I mean, and so I, I see race really differently. I see it. It's very real. I see racial tensions. I, can I feel like uniquely you see it in a, in a way that, in, in a way that's, like, almost nobody else can see it. Yeah, because like, I mean, I, I've always gone to, I went to private school, you know, I was always like the black kid, and like all my friends are like white and Jewish, and like, like real, real white, like white yeah. people. Yep, super Bro, white. like, yes, yeah, like red hair, like Jews, like that's my people. <laughs> like I'm probably, someone's probably gonna politically correct me on no, that, whatever. but like, but I mean, Jews I, call themselves Jews. Yeah, like I, I, I just grew. I like when I was in private school, I grew up around that culture, you know. And but yeah. I was all, and so even though I grew up around like you know, in like a, a bit more white, white or culture, like I'm still black. Yeah, yeah, I was still very much so black. You can't escape that, you know. And so like, and I didn't really think about race a lot until you know I got a little bit older and started seeing things, and I was like, oh, this is real. When did you like? Do you remember when? Like, did, I mean. I don't know. So I feel like some adoptions, it's like if you're white and your parents are white and you're adopted, they might not like tell you for a while or whatever, or like whatever it Dude, might I be. Man, I was it, was it ever like a thing where you one day like r realize like, I don't know. Like I, like I said, I don't have context for it. So it's kind of I mean, hard for me to like think about it. Questioned me, it always pushed me to question as a kid. Not even about that, but just about everything. And I think that's cool. I was around 12 or 13 when I was asking questions, but I mean, I don't really, you know, like, you can say what they want, like kids are smart and like don't get me wrong, they are, man. But like when you're twelve or thirteen, it's one thing to ask where children came from. Like to have this birds and the bees conversation. It's an entirely different conversation. Uh uh but it's an entirely different situation to be like, Hey mom, why don't I look like you and dad? Yeah. I'm sorry, no twelve year old can handle that question. That's a weighted question, man. Those 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 feelings of rejection. 
oh my god i felt that like why did i because my birth siblings on my mom's side birth moms were kept i was like wow. why was i tossed to the side why do i feel like i was worthless and it had nothing to do with that i didn't get full closure with it until i sent this long text to my birth mom like a week and a half ago like, i didn't get full closure. i'm 23 man yeah some people go, go go their entire life without having those feelings of, so i i kind of have those those moments of abandonment like i feel that yeah you know? so and, and it kind of plays into my, my love life so it's like when i tell you i love you like you don't get it i'm there like mm -hmm. you could sleep with someone my best friend but you're like hey I, if i've t fallen in love with you and if you tell me you love me but and, and even if something bad happens like you don't get it like i'm gonna be there mm -hmm. like i'm so extreme in my mind it's like i've felt this like abandonment thing like i will literally be there mm. like i guarantee you i will show up nine times out of ten more than your boyfriend or your current boyfriend would, and this come from your ex-boyfriends like that's how extreme i think of that shit man so like i finally got like peace with it now but i didn't really see color for a while until i was like seven years old interesting you know and, yeah and, and i didn't see color for a while at seven years old and You know, when I was in public school in Carrollton, when I was younger, my, I had a white friend, and this black dude called my white friend the N-word. And I was like, Mom, what is that? And like, I never heard it. And mm. then she's like, oh. Then she said, we knew we need to switch you out of private school when you came home one day and you said you want to be a garbage man. Mm. I didn't understand it then, but then, then I get it now. It's like, where I'm from, there's not really successful black people. Like, there's not. Weird. Like, it's just not a thing. In Atlanta, yeah. Yeah. Like, totally. in, in Carrollton, like, like, the black people just, like, live in the projects. What Not you, all of them, but, yeah, like, I mean, what, I'm the only black dude who hangs out downtown. Is there, is, I mean, like, is there a reason that you can discern why that is, or, like... Because most of the education, like, you look at the, most, the wealthiest people, like, there's a lot of old money in where I'm from. You look at, like, the wealthiest people, like, you look at their race, it's, like, 99% white. It's like there's there. I, I, I personally think in the, in the black community, not all, because I hate blanket statements, there's this crabs in a bucket mentality, but like they don't want to see, they don't want to see another person winning. Yeah. And I like think the crabs will bring it. If one crab's trying to escape, the other crabs bring will bring it, bring it down. Like, you're going to try to succeed. Hell no, you're not. And I think we should support each other. Like, I don't really like how black people will attack each other. It's like in this great state of, you know, nationalistic divide that we're in, we can't even support each other. We can at times, but like, it's like you look at one, like two black people. I can look at someone the wrong way. Someone start fighting. I'm like, fam, bro, we should be uniting. We should be building, and, and we should not be building against other races. We should be building with each other and building with everyone. Mm -hmm. Not be like, oh, like blacks need to give all them top again, and like blacks all this. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. We need to protect this. Like, stay together, but build with everyone. That's the way I look at mm -hmm. it, man. We all need to unite. Like, yeah, I'm, I fuck with the vision I'm trying to build. Literally, yeah, though, bro. Yeah. Like, literally. I like what you said about that because I think a lot of people, I, I see it a lot on, like, Instagram and stuff, like, support black businesses and, like, all, you know, stuff like that. And, like, there's, there's nothing, there, of course, there's nothing wrong with supporting a black business. I know where you're going with and, this. And, and yeah, it's, like, people make, <laughs> people make arguments, like, okay, but why aren't you just supporting all small businesses? You know what I mean? Like, you know, or, or and, and it's like it's the same I mean, kind of it's the same yeah, kind of question with yeah, like yeah, yeah, black yeah, yeah. lives matter. No, all lives matter. You know, it's it's like, well, you know, it's kind of a similar thing. But the the thing with the whole black lives matter man is that like <laughs> there are people who are involved in it, and there are people there are people who are involved. There, the amount of people who are involved in it who are willing to have a conversation about it are so nil is so small in terms of like the masses where it's just like support black lives matter if you don't support it fuck you you're racist mm -hmm. it's like no educate them yeah or if someone is a is a trump supporter fuck you you're nazi or whatever it might be i got i got i got i got friends who are trump supporters yeah who i love we just, we're just talking about luke crawford we're just like luke crawford shout yeah. out luke crawford yeah i love sure. i got nothing but love for luke mm -hmm. luke said hey i need i need a place to stay in savannah I'm like come over i don't give a damn I, I, you don't support this fine you've been good to me you're, you're an educated person because you wouldn't have a conversation. Bro, like, you want to go do that? Like, dude, I just, like, don't get caught up in that shit. And I know so many people who are just like, man, like, if you support this, fuck you. And it's like, bro, like, you ain't got to just put someone fucking down, man. Mm-hmm. 
And like, I'm not saying condone yeah. what they do or do not support, but like, take yourself out of it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so like I was saying earlier, you're like interested. You're you're uniquely qualified to almost talk about a lot of a lot of these yeah. like strange. Like you said, this uh, you had a good way of putting it earlier. Like this national moment we're in right now of like, there's a lot of. I think it's propagated a lot by the media. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Like me and you right now are sitting down, a black dude, a white dude. No one's like looking at us like, wow, history in the making. A black dude and a white dude are sitting down at a table. It's, it's not like that. But no. if you only watch TV, you would think that it's like that or something, you know, or you know, people don't really understand, there's like a crazy like, divide or something. People don't really understand. Like when they post stuff on Facebook, like my liberal friends will post stuff. My friends who are liberal, not liberal friends, but friends who are liberal will post stuff. What they don't really get is that like, when you're contributing in social media and you're putting stuff out there, these engineers are geniuses. They know what you post. They're gonna show you more stuff that you like. They're not gonna show you a conservative thing unless you're Aunt Sally who lives in like, who lives in like the sticks of Kansas says like, I was just about to just say Kansas. Say, all these dudes are going to hell and they're all fucking losers. Like no, like, the, <laughs> uh, who's just like, oh, but like you should be back in church. Like the only way you're gonna see that is if she posts. And she probably gets you like fucking socks for Christmas or some shit like that, you know? <laughs> um, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but it's like you won't. I appreciate some good socks. If she gives uh, me good socks. Gosh, yeah, some wool, some ooh, uh, some smart some, wool socks. Ooh, some Boy, good like some moisture wick. <laughs> Stay out of here. I fuck with the vision. Stay out of my DMs, bro. If you ain't got that moisture wick. <laughs> but um, yeah, dude. But like, people don't get that. Like, you're only gonna see shit. You and it goes back to the same shit I was talking about. If you're only around people who are just like you, you're not gonna see a different kind of world. Mm -hmm. You're not. Don't put down the ghetto unless you go to the fucking ghetto and see what the the struggles are, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go see the struggles, bro. Like I've seen them. That shit is real. Yep. And like, I, I have friends who are gay. I see those struggles. Like, don't write that shit off because you don't agree. Yeah. That shit is real, dog. Yeah. An agreement is is a weird statement to use in that context too, because it's like it's like agreeing is is hard to say because you know some people will argue well it's a choice and it's and, and some other people are, the other extreme is you were born that way and and other people will say there's some sort of weird middle ground where mixture of a lot of things turned turned you out sure, to be that way or sure. whatever you want to argue but it, yeah the 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 argument of like I don't agree with that is a strange one to to try to argue because then you're you're already kind of on the wrong side of the argument there but but i, I guess the, the the thing i was going to bring up too is i did a podcast with my friend cc and he like i like what you said in the beginning too too white for the black kids too black for the white kids and i i feel like he could relate to that because he kind of uh when he was younger he grew up in an environment where it was mostly black people and he grew, and then when he moved his parents moved him they moved up to like North Gwinnett where like his, where he had a lot of white friends and stuff. And we were talking about like cultural appropriation and all this stuff. And one thing that he said was like black culture embraced Eminem because like Eminem was not afraid to, to hang. Like he wasn't, he wasn't trying to like appropriate it, but, and, and then like turn it into this other thing. I just trying he, to get down with the boys. Exactly. He, he was, he was, he was, he assimilated himself into that Facts. culture rather than trying to Perverse wear a, fifth culture. Wear a flat bill hat sideways and, and, and talk a certain way, but then not, you know. Like, hey, I'm not going to help you guys. I'm going to steal I'm your butchering, shit. I'm butchering the way that he explained it. If you, you know, I know but, what you're saying. But that, you right? get what I'm saying. No, 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 man. You're making perfect sense, dog. And, making... and that's like kind of what you were bringing up was like the, when you only hang with people, like you're saying go to the ghetto, go to the projects. That shit is real. Like, you know, you can't, it's cliche, but you can't judge another man like unless you've walked a mile in his shoes kind Facts, of deal. bro. And and that's why like I think my, Young Jeezy said that in the song. Yeah, and and but it's and, true though. And, and my brother, most people don't want to yeah. do that. And my brother the other day he he said something and I got kind of heated, um and and my parents were like, got really mad at me. They're like, be nice to your brother and stuff. And it, it was mainly because he kind of made an ignorant statement, and I was more angry that like he knows better kind of thing. For and sure. I, and he he came back and and he was like, dude, I I only I only uh, I, I'm not mad. Like I understand why you got heated because. You know, he, he was asking something like, why are these people like this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, you don't understand, like, he's that way because of, of blah, 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 blah. Like, you, you're not thinking of, like, 
all the things that led up. And I'm not claiming to be a perfect person or know what, how everyone lives or be, know what it feels to be an Indian person or a black person or a Muslim or anything like that, but you gotta be at least like open to the idea of considering like, why would a person act like this? Why does a person talk like this? Why, that why people does a person, are different, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, 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 and like, why, why does a, you know, people will bring this up like, why, why is this person talking like a black person or talking like a white person or whatever, you know, Man, it's a choice shit, or dog. it's a, it, it's a, it's a very like sensitive topic, but it's, it's kind of, it's weird. There's, there's not like a, there's not a right or wrong answer to a lot of that stuff. You know, I think if you go in it with the intention of like, I'm going to try to be right, you're already wrong. Mm. Just go into the intention of hearing something new. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's what dude, I don't expect anything anymore. Yeah, man, like, I say some, some wild, and I don't say wild in a bad way. I say wild just like shit that you would never see. Man, Scad, bro, you see some wild shit, bro. I don't care, like, even if you're part of the wild shit, you agree that's wild shit. <laughs> like, I see some wild stuff, man. I'm like, yeah. all right, dog. I'm like, I mean, this is the world, though. Yep. It's true. What, are these people not going to be who they are because I'm not looking? Mm. Just because you don't see them, it don't happen. People don't get that either, though. You know, they're just like, I'll just turn my head. It's like, no, like, dude, like, in the, mo this is the, like, it helped me get perspective about this, man. Like, in the, mo in the nicest and most beautiful way possible, like, you are not the epicenter of the universe. Life will happen with or without you. Mm. You could die. I could die today. These cars are still going to drive down ponts or down, uh, Whatever the streets call. You get my point though. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's still gonna they're still gonna drive down. Yep. Man, I'm 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 gone, but like life still happens. And you gotta once you realize that, man, like you start realizing, you start picking your battles, you start realizing what the, that, the shit that actually matters to get upset about, the shit that doesn't, the shit that matters and the shit that doesn't, bro. Like when you start thinking about that, that's when shit changes, man. Mm -hmm. Like that's real. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I like meant. what you said about like not having expectations too. Like not not expecting anything from anybody. Because, like, I think, like, for me, for this podcast, like, I didn't really do any, like, hardcore research on who you were and have all these questions ready and, like, all this stuff prepared. I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, Luke's my homie. He said you were cool. Like, let's do a podcast. Let's talk about stuff. Yeah, sure. I had some ideas of, like, what we might talk about or whatever. But, like, you know, people will go in with, like, so many ideas of what they want to expect out of something. Like, for example, uh, uh, they'll, they'll go into... Um, a business or a, like let, let's say a hotel like they'll go into a hotel expecting some level of something and then when they don't get it they freak out or whatever and i'm not that or, or like at the airport and mm -hmm. they expect things to go that way and then their flight gets canceled and they freak out and it's like dude you can't i mean you can have an idea of what's going to happen but like if something changes you can't you you got to just kind of like learn to go with the flow of shit and like learn to just not have expectations embrace the chaos babe that was yeah. like a print i'm selling right now like, embrace, embrace the, the chaos. chaos babe i like that you know but when you like really that. put think, when you put thought into it, man, there's so much, there's so little stuff in this world you actually have a hand in control, and you can only change the weather, the climate, and the weather of yourself. I can, I can control myself. Mm -hmm. I can control how you're gonna react to me, though. You can yeah. Shoot me right now, and that's just a reality, you know. Like especially in this world we kind of live in, like yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, like I think I kind of put shit in perspective. Like there's really not a lot you can control. And as I have friends who are like planners, and I'm like. What happens when you plan your life, but your life doesn't go as planned? Yeah. But your plans don't go as planned. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? What happens yeah. when your plans don't go as planned? Yep. How are you gonna? You, you back a plan for the plans that don't that don't get turned into plans? Exactly. <laughs> you know, I was uh, with my I was with Taylor. We were eating brunch at this like kind of popular place in Savannah. This woman started projectile vomiting literally on Sunday brunch. <laughs> <laughs> this shit was like skewing out. <laughs> <laughs> like like full send. Was she like hung over or like No, like this twelve year old I think she was sick. Oh she was a kid? Oh the damn train. This is gonna be loud, but I kinda like it. There's an actual train. I wanna see if like we can even hear each other. I'm gonna pee again. Dude go for it. There's a train, go for the pee. I'm gonna pee. And I gotta roll out at like 335. Dude, that's cool. We'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. All right, we're back. Yeah, dog. We're back I'm in action. Here.
This is I have to say this is the most this is the most peeing podcast. The pee podcast. The pee cast. The most fluid podcast. The most fluid. <laughs> Damn. We had the sonic boom at the beginning <laughs> and uh, and uh, and the and, and Dude, the fluid I cast. I told you I got so much stuff stuff like lined up. I love that. Okay, so we got five more minutes to chat. And uh, ask me anything, dog. We were. T- what were we t- I, I forget what, what we were talking about right before this, but just like perspectives. Yeah, and perspectives stuff. and all that kind of shit. But um, but yeah, dude. Is there anything? Like, we got five minutes. Like, is there any other like shit that you want people to hear? Like, somebody that's listened this deep into the podcast is probably like an open-minded person, probably a cool person, probably someone that we get along with. But like, what types of what 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 do you want the world to hear? I guess if you had any kind of closing message or anything. I know that's a lot. That's a lot of uh, responsibility. Closing message. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be one or like a freaking moral of the story or anything like that, but... Uh, don't fall into the trap that any other moment other than now exists. Mm. If you love someone, tell them. Don't be afraid to... If you're a guy, don't be afraid to tell your dad or your guy friends that you love them because they might, because they might think you're gay or might think you're weak. If you're in love with a girl, tell her. You know, tell be on, be honest with yourself. If you don't like something, voice your opinion. Uh, be honest. Honesty is the most attractive thing. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not even talking about in like a relationship. It's just like it's like the it's like the best cleanser. It's like the best detox. You yeah, know? like it gets up to toxins. Um, and be present. Be incredibly present in every moment. Um, I don't care what anyone says. I do care what people say, but god dang it. I'm mean, saying like... I don't give a fuck. Well, I give a couple. Yeah. <laughs> There's something to be learned in every, since every single situation of every single day with every single person for as long as you live. There's always something to be learned. Always. Mm-hmm. Find it. Constantly push for what can be learned. Or what can be exchanged. Um, just love people, man. Love people. Love, pe- love your enemy. Mm. Love your uh, love your parents, love your girlfriend, love your boyfriend, love love your dog, love the insect on the ground because you know what? Like, I was I, there was this insect, there was this, like there was this, this hornet on my door, and I was I was like, oh shit! And I was like, yeah, but that's just a smaller form. Of, no, not even a smaller form. That's just a physical, or that's a that's another source of life trying to survive just as much as I am. Mm-hmm. Why would I kill it? Just trying to make it, it's trying to eat. Trying to survive just as much as I am. Trying to support his family. Facts, though. I mean, but seriously, though, man, like that, they're, they're trying to, that's an ecosystem that's trying to thrive, too. So are humans. Yep. You know what I mean? And we, like, we have this weird hierarchy with animals, like, where we, like, for example, oh, this cute little ant. Like, we might not step on an ant. Like, we might, like, or, or some people are, hate ants, but, like, or, like, a cute little, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of, like, a cute bug that no one would, like, want to step on. Butterfly. Butterfly. Perfect example. Butterfly comes in, nobody's freaking out, everyone's delighted. What a beautiful butterfly. And a, uh, another bug comes flying on you, you're slapping at it, swatting at it, squishing it. And it's weird how we give like this priority to certain animals that we think are like attractive or cute or we, we, whatever. We, we play, like we, 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 we do this thing where we determine the value based on our own preferences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, oh, because it's small. It's not important. It's like, yeah. no, 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 no. It's still See, a life. That's, what, that's where you're wrong. The smallest details make the biggest differences. Yeah. That's why I always laugh when you see, like, somebody who's, like, an ethical vegan, but they're swatting at bugs or something. It's like... So I always laugh when I ever see, a, like, like, a liberal, like, <laughs> attack someone. I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm I like, thought you were yeah, tolerant. because fighting... Fi- the tolerant left is yep. that what they call them? The tolerant left. The tolerant left. left. <laughs> the tolerant like, left in my best Milo voice. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> that guy is wild. Dude, I watch his. I just I watch like I like watch a bunch of videos on. He's I've, a man. He's I've so seen, funny. I've seen some videos on him and like Ben Shapiro and like I, I've seen him like own like I'll, I watch like one video. I'm like oh I'll watch one and I'm not like sitting here like supporting or whatever. I just like watch it because it's just I find that shit funny. Of course. And then you lead one like. Ben Shapiro owns social justice warrior. I ben Shapiro, it. I'm like, yo! And I look at the source and it's like, Ray's right. Or it's like, 
the world. Like, it's like, fuck liberals. And I'm like, I need to get off here. I'm like, this is getting super biased. <laughs> so I'm like, this isn't even true anymore. <laughs> My favorite is like, like 12 times SJW has <laughs> got pwned or something like yes. that. Like 12 times SJW's got shat on on Black Lives on Matter, TV. whole whole belief system shattered. And I'm like, well, let's not have internet for 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yeah, dude, I've, I, I watch those videos. That's hilarious, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> If people have no idea what we're talking about, they need to go check it out because it's actually kind of funny. It's it's entertaining as well. If you can, I hundred percent separate myself from like yeah. the topics being discussed, but like exactly, it's a wild shit in there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, dude, to wrap this up, man, like just love people, dude. Like love it. What, and that sounds cliche, man, but like that's the best thing I've ever done. To love people, it's like that person sat down there, like she's like, hey, can I? I, I don't know. You just gotta love people, man. You gotta be open, open with people, and like be mm-hmm. vulnerable, man. Feel everything. Yeah, it's the only way to live this life, man. It's so short, dude. It's so so fleeting. It's yep. so fragile, dude. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a glass of water on an edge. Mm-hmm. You know, all it yeah. needs is one person to push it or to, to t-bone you, and you're done. Toast. Because when you're done, you can't go back and tell that person what are you gonna. You're don't be afraid, man. You know, like what what do we actually had to lose, man? There's nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. So you lost a million dollars. Okay. Love people, dude. That's what it comes out to, man. I love it. I love mm-hmm. it, dude. Four love letter word. People. Love, love, love it, dude. Know. That Please. was an awesome podcast. Yeah, bro. dude. Great, man. The most fluid podcast In I've ways. ever had. Facts. <laughs> awesome. We'll see you later, everybody. Boom. There you have it. A record breaking podcast. Four P breaks. So fluid (laughs) i hope you like the peeing sound effects i put in there i thought it was kind of funny um anyways i really want to thank taylor for being on the show this is a really fun episode and i can't wait to see where he goes in the next few years i have a feeling we're gonna see some really big stuff coming from him it's uh it's kind of crazy um he he's crazy enough to think he can change the world and i have a feeling that he's gonna do it because i have similar tendencies as well (laughs) if you want to go follow him on instagram i'll have it linked in the show notes but his username is taylor.ayers that's t-a-y-l t-a-y-l-e-r dot a-y-e-r-s yeah taylor with an e and if you want to check out his work or purchase any of his prints for sale you can go to his website which is taylor-ayers.com It's a dash, not a dot for his website. Anyways, if you made it this far, I would say that it's safe to assume that you enjoyed this podcast. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you'd also probably really enjoy listening to some of my other episodes, but I have one in mind that you should definitely go listen to, and that is episode 16 with my friend Kohan Scott. And um, CC, he's a musician. His style is very unique. He draws inspiration from Outkast, Kanye West, Coheed and Cambria, uh, Incubus, and Stevie Wonder, just to name a few. He's got a vast knowledge of music and history, and we had a passionate conversation about music and culture. That episode was one of the most unique podcasts that I had done so far, and I really, really enjoyed it. I feel like um, the episode you just listened to kind of had the same feel, so if you want to keep those vibes going... Definitely go back into the archives to check that episode out. Also, I would recommend going back only two episodes, if you haven't already, to go listen to episode 63 with Kevin Fuller. And Kevin is a furniture designer, he's a world traveler, he's an entrepreneur, and he's an all-around awesome and thoughtful guy. He's not um, just like a regular furniture designer, he makes really dope pieces of art and during our conversation we talked about what it was like um, growing up in Germany getting his dream car starting his past businesses and how he became a furniture designer and speaking yeah yeah so go listen to that episode it was really good that was episode 63 speaking of record-breaking episodes 
my next episode will hold the record for the longest episode so far. I know that you guys were clamoring for the longest pod, <laughs> for the longest podcast ever. No, but seriously, um, two hours and forty six minutes was the previous record. Um, that was held by Connor Peterson and I on episode thirteen. Long standing record, but that was absolutely shattered by Xander Yost and I on episode 66. And we went well into the three-hour zone, and I loved every minute of it. <laughs> but um, I've known Xander since the fourth grade, and to be honest, I've always known that he was a special kid. He's super smart. He's an amazing athlete. He played NCAA D1 football for the Naval Academy and for Georgia Southern. Um, He never actually graduated, but he recently quit his job that was paying him a six-figure salary to be an investor running a hedge fund backed by cryptocurrency. I think I got that right. That's kind of the gist of it. But um, we hadn't had a real conversation in almost a decade, so this was truly one for the books. I'm really excited about it. I hope you are too. Uh, That episode will be launching on Thursday, the 28th, so stay tuned. And if you didn't give me a Christmas present, I'm not mad. Don't worry. It's not too late. You can just go review the podcast on iTunes. I know I talk about it on every single episode, but it only takes a minute, and it would mean the absolute world to me. Right now, we're at 51 reviews, and this is episode 65, so that is kind of pathetic, people. (laughs) <laughs> I know there are 4,000 of you guys listening per month, and I can't even get one five-star per episode. That makes me very, very sad. So another great way that you can help is just to go rate it, but also to, to just simply share it with your friends. You know, if you if you like Taylor, if you like this episode, please share it with a friend. That would be super dope. And if you want to follow me on social media, um, you can check out my new and improved website, andrewdeitch.com. I'm starting to optimize my site for some external money-making opportunities very soon. So stay tuned for that. I will be making big, big, big announcements um, coming early 2018. But that's all I got. I will see you guys on Thursday for episode 66 with Xander Yost. See you later, everybody. Have a satanic ritual, I'll pull up. Deadass, I will be there. Like, bro, I will bring tacos. Like, I'm in that thing. Like, you need a goat? Pull up. I got a farm. I'll pull up.